words reverberated in the silence of the landscape. In the silence of places, conversations occur and words are heard. It is the only place where conversations happen. Without wanting to fetishize the silence, we thought that this was the first time we could actually speak, listen, and hear each other. In the silence of the landscape, outside of the regulatory noise of the nation state, that is, if the landscape ever escapes this regulatory noise, we conversed. But I doubt that it escapes it. Another regulatory organization was put in place, and we liked it. We seemed to like the perspective of what we were listening to. With all our skepticism, we liked it. Have you ever been drawn to a strong political organization or rhetoric for that matter? Maybe the safety of these spaces made us feel at home, at home in this landscape. We wanted to stay. It was almost like a 20th century separatist group, like women groups, like our feminist reading group. We sat for hours talking and words did reverberate in the silence of the landscape and came back to us, transformed, sometimes melted, sometimes in the shape of those mountains, deformed, no, distorted with distorted shapes and sounds or maybe transformed. Were you really able to speak in that space? The space where words are redundant and reverberate in ideological repetitions in ideological boomerangs. What does it mean to really be able to speak of politics? We spoke the words of that space in order for us to be heard and in order for the conversation to occur. The conversation can only occur under certain conditions of speech. The, the conversation occurred when we started nodding and speaking a certain new acquired language. Or not necessarily, we just asked questions. We exchanged nods and smiles, a lot of smiles. We hugged happily at the end of every conversation. We remembered the 90s when we used to talk about politics at a very low level, murmuring. In order for the conversation to occur, we had read many books we were prepared to nod with our heads in approval. In order for the conversation to occur, we were prepared to remain silent at times and accept the limits imposed onto the conversation. We were inspired, we murmured. After the fourth day, we spoke the words of that space, of that landscape, we listened and imitated their words. We nodded, we even imitated the sounds that came through in the landscape in that nature. The sounds are imitable in the way words are pronounced. We embraced it. She said to us that the nation state has already collapsed and in 50 years, a new order will prevail in the whole region and beyond. We are believers, we held on to her words. We liked her and listened to her so closely. She said it has all collapsed. What we were witnessing is a slow death and change of system. We believed her and nodded with our heads. We wanted to believe that there was a slow meltdown occurring while we were speaking. The moment we were conversing, our words and predictions had such an effect that the collapse was happening outside, right outside in that landscape. If things do not happen in that way, then what is prax praxis if not a math mathematical application? When the water freezes at zero degrees and when the temperature drops at night, the snowflakes hover between the branch and the ground. They start dropping on the ground around midday when the temperature gets warmer. The physical transformation of the snow into water and the water into ice happens between midnight and noon. Every day, the same process repeats itself with new added elements. You can imagine the same flake of snow melting into water and back to ice. 
and the terrestrial world, styrofoam, rocks, artificial flowers, are all made to decorate the earth under which the bodies are buried. When the snow melts around noon, we can see small flakes accumulating. The flowers will stay, but the snow will melt. Some artificial leaves are also thrown on the earth in order to decorate the graves that have not yet been made into graves. The bodies are just freshly dropped into the earth. Biz işte 40 kadın arkadaş bir yere geldik. Uh, 40 women we came together. Kendi başımıza kalıyorduk. Uh, we were staying together on, on our own. Herkeslerle aramızda bir saatlik mesafe vardı. There was Dağlarda tabii. A distance of one hour walk between us and the men. Tabii her zaman saldırı olma olasılığı olan bir süreç. Uh, it was a time when there was always the risk to be attacked. Hepimiz yeniydik. Bir we all were işte. new in the mountains, maybe one year. Da and we korkuyorduk. were also Yıldan afraid of the mountains, for example, of birds, of snakes, things evet. like that. Ama biz o zaman 40 kadın arkadaş tek başımıza kaldığımızda aynı zamanda bizden çalınan bütün güçleri de farkına vardı. But when we stayed 40 as 40 women together in a place. We realized also all these things that were stolen from us. Mesela biz bir ay boyunca bir sürü odun çektik erkeklerle birlikte. For example, one month we were um, only carrying a, a lot of wooden together with the men also. Bir yere topladık böyle üst üste attık. Uh, we put it on one place together, you know, all on. A... Ama onları hani baltayla kırıp götürme zamanı gelince. But when it was the time to break them to make them small. Biz balta kullanmayı bilmiyorduk. We didn't know how to use the axe, <gülüyor> although we were collecting this wooden. İşte o anda birçok arkadaş dedi ki Allah bu annemin babamın belasını versin niye bana balta kullanmıyor dedi. <gülüyor> in this situation a lot of our female friends were saying you know they got angry with their mothers and their fathers they said why did not why didn't they show us to use this axe. Yani i̇lk öğreneceğimiz şey balta kullanmak. And we said the first thing uh, to learn would be to use the axe. <gülüyor> Öğrenene kadar buralarımız hepsi yara oldu bir ay içinde. And until we learnt it within one month we got a lot of uh, you know wound, wounds here. <gülüyor> Ama öğrendik tabii birçok şey gibi. Uh, we learned it like a lot of things. The mountains have always been um, a very strong uh, protector uh, of the people who have been historically persecuted. Also, when in 2014 ISIS attacked uh, the Yazidis, for example, the first thing that the people did was to flee to the mountains um, or waters or, um, you know, landscapes. Uh, natural geographies have always been uh, sites of uh, protection for people, and that's not because they are there in the service of humans, but rather because humans are part of that uh, region. And humans have a good, have until the creation of a big city state, people have always understood how to live together with um, nature. I know this, for example, from my own uh, grandparents' village, how they live and interact with nature. They have a very different relationship to the animals that they raise, they have a very different relationship. They sing songs to the mountains, not about the mountains. And I think ma many, many different cultures, groups, um, indigenous peoples have this kind of relationship with nature, which is very much a comradeship, you can say, it's a friendship rather than an alliance. I mean, we are most of people who have studied or so, yes, and political activists from universities and so on. We are a certain elite, we must break it and go to the broader population, actually, and, and first to bring something to the people and also to learn. I mean, we speak and, and from the practice of these people, we can learn a lot and we have learned a lot. Yani e, mesela ben çocukluğumu hatırlıyorum. I remember my childhood. Hı hı. E, i̇şte annem mesela hani benim için ben öyle o derste öyle söyledim. Hani benim e, ekolojik öğretmenim ilk öğretmenim annemdir. My first ecological teacher was my mother. This was what I said there during hı hı. the lesson. E, çünkü e, hani bize e, çocukluğumuzdan beri işte hani bu doğada hani biz de, insan da yaşıyor, bir kuş da yaşıyor, işte bir e, ne bileyim hani bir kedi de yaşıyor, bir Böcek de yaşıyor, bir ağaç da yaşıyor. Hepsinin benim kadar, bir insan kadar bu doğada hakkı var ve yaşam yeri var yani. Because what my mother taught me when I was a child was, uh, we as a human uh, have a place in the nature, 
uh, like for example a bird or uh, let's say uh, a cat or uh, a tree. Uh, and I, as a human, have the same right to exist inside this nature like all the other things. They all have the same place. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. you should not uh, hurt the earth. Uh, you have to protect mm -hmm. the green. Uh, don't eat uh, um, meat. Don't uh, kill the um, mm -hmm. animals. Yani o felsefe tabi hani bize gelene kadar bizim çağımız biz 21. yüzyıl 20. yüzyıl kuşağıyız çocuklarıyız. So we are the children of the 20s or the 21st century so it took long time until this uh, philosophy reached us. When we look at the universe itself about how um, ecologies work, how um, environments work, how uh, beings, existences uh, interact with each other, they do so um, not necessarily in this social Darwinistic um, concepts of um, competition and the survival of the fittest and destroying the other but uh, ecology is always based on interaction on um, mutualism on if you will cooperation if we want to use human terms in order to um, interpret uh, ecology so in that sense if we look at um, uh, self-defense from this way of every existence having the need to further their life their survival but within an ecological framework, so in interaction with other beings. If we look at the situation today, we can say that each member of the, of the movement has a certain uh, consciousness about ecology, and this was developed within the conditions of war. If we look at how nature organizes its self-defense, we can um, f draw from that a philosophy which is also very ecological. How can we within harmony with society, with other people together, make sure that we survive, uh, make sure that we can continue our existence and understand self-defense beyond just physical survival. When I joined the uh, guerrilla 24 years ago, uh, there is a kind of contradiction between war and nature, so I entered uh, an atmosphere of war. And O çelişkiyle yaşıyorsun fakat e, Kürt hareketi açısından sorun tabi ya. Hmm. E, biz öyle bir şey zorlukla birlikte ekolojik felsefeyi yaratıyoruz. Hmm. Yani onu söylemek istiyorum. İlk katılım şeyinden başlayabilirsin. Hmm. Hani onun şeyini bağlansın sen kurabilir. Uh, for example, um, when uh, in the guerrilla in these conditions of war, sometimes you need to cut the leaves. Or some parts of the of the of the tree to be able to lie on it or to protect yourself from uh, from from animals because you you need you don't have an alternative and I remember that when I joined the guerrilla and when I saw this for the first time that they were cutting the trees I began to cry because I was thinking the guerrilla should not do this uh, but what she wants to say or what she wants to express with the with this example is that at least uh, the uh, consciousness or our understanding of ecology inside the movement was uh, developed by this kind of experiences that we had, all this kind of contradictions that we had with ecological life. Uh, in a system like uh, liberalism, in liberalist thought, philosophy or politics in general, uh, the expectation is that people, um, groups, individuals should surrender the means of protection of defense to the state um, because the state should have the monopoly on the use of force. Still in the practice we have some problems to implement some of our mm -hmm. philosophy towards ecology. We have big disadvantages as Kurdish or Middle Eastern people mm -hmm. because for example the whole world also uh, every new um, developed uh, um, weapon is uh, exercised uh, in, in on our soil, for example, you know. A lot of things in our movement, they have been first, let's say, developed or discussed among the guerrilla. And I mean, they had, they have their communal life and they started to think more about their relations to the nature, uh, to the geography where they live. And this contributed also a lot, of course, to us. I mean, they brought the discussion to us, friends with, from us, discussed with them. This is also a dimension which we should not forget always.
I have seen this strong emotional feeling of gaining this in my own person and in a lot of in the mm -hmm. faces of a lot of comrades also. And mesela savaşın çok ağır e, kayıplarını ya da bedellerini ödemiş birçok erkek kadın arkadaşım bir küçücük bir canlıya yaklaşırken ki şefkatini görebilmişim yani. Uh, for example I have seen how soft the attitude of a male or a female comrade was towards something like a very small thing in nature mm -hmm. although this person has uh, lived uh, the whole uh, brutality of war mm -hmm. the less people are aware of their links with nature the more likely they are to become um, liberal individuals which have only loyalty to the state mm -hmm. so um, the more we are connected to nature um, to geography the more likely we are um, to be conscious of ourselves, be conscious of our place in the universe, uh, our, con uh, our place in ecology in general. And the state is actively trying to destroy that because the state is very well aware of the connections between nature and humans and that the state knows that in order for it to be legitimized and justified, it needs to break radically this link between humans and nature. So self-defense actually comes uh, from nature itself. It is something which is very organic and normal. Every uh, existence, whether human or not, uh, relies on means of protecting itself. Oops. Okay. A bit too early. Okay. Thank you very much.